Hi everybody, Vet JPEG. Uh, I did a, a Norman Rockwell painting, kind of sums up my feelings about this. The end of this treasure hunt. Um, needless to say, I didn't find it. I had some people ask me, uh, PM me if I found it, and I said no. And I had some people PM me and say they really like my channel and they hope it doesn't stop. And I appreciated that. And then I had a couple of people who PM me and said my videos really mean a lot to them. And you know, they hope I don't stop. And so. Uh, I really appreciate that. No, they're not. I'm not going to stop doing my videos. They're just not going to be about Fort Sven. I mean, they will probably in the near future because there's more stuff we're going to find out, right? But um, it's just a hobby I do. It's not monetized, so it doesn't really matter. And if it ever got to be monetized, it would be hardly enough money to really worry about. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep doing it. It's called. It is what it is productions and it has which is just a moniker of course there's nothing there's no business or anything so it doesn't really matter what i talk about i can talk about anything it just happened to be that i started it right now he's doing the fort sven hunt literally i think i was out in vermilion creek tromping around and I, on one of the videos i talk about like i'm going to just start putting these on a channel and call it, it is what it is productions ewe productions so that's fine or rather, that's the, where that's at. The way this whole thing's been handled has just led to a lot of questions. Mr. Fenn came out and made the announcement about the treasure being found, and then he said he wasn't going to, he was going to release information and photos, and then he said he wasn't going to release information and photos, and that kind of inflamed the people that were wondering if it was really found or how it was found or the circumstances under which it was found. And then all of a sudden he released the photos, and now I've got an article that talks about two of the photos. And um, now we're at this point where we just basically know that uh, the treasure's been found. And um, I think I think it would be good if Mr. Finn and I had to laugh. Before the photos came out, I had four episodes made for a video series. Because like I said, some people, you know, they were like, are you going to talk about this? And I was like, yeah, sure, I've got some ideas about it. I had four of those, then, then the photos came out. So then I felt, well, okay, that puts a twist in it. So then I sat down and I did what turned into three, <laughs> no, two videos, just because the photos came out. So now I'm getting into this weird thing where I've got four, four videos before the photos came out followed by two videos after the photos came out. So it's turned into this kind of long thing with a transition before and after. And then an article came out, which really impressed me. And so then I had that coming in, which put a twist to the photos. And long story short, I had them all even on my, my uh, YouTube page. And then I, I mean, I didn't publish them. I had them on there privately. I was going to publish them. And then I said, no, I'm not going to publish them. Because it's just too long-winded, and so much of it had old information by the time I was... Okay, Eric, you're just really talking a lot. So, so now I'm going to do at least one or two or three videos right now and get this off my chest before anything else happens and any more news comes out. And more news will be coming out, and I'll try to do videos when they happen without constantly hedging, putting them out while I watch new news come out. My whole thing is, I'm not sure it's a conspiracy theory, but I, for timing's sake, I will just say this. You can look at it, when you know all the stuff going on in the background of Mr. Fenn, either you can be suspicious about the, the you can be suspicious about the treasure chest being found when it was, or you can just say, boy, did Mr. Fenn luck out that finally someone found that treasure chest. It was on a, a live show that uh, Calazar just did, and Capro, I think, brought up the fact that, and I, this was not something I had remembered, but she brought up the fact that in one of the interviews, when they said to Fenn, would you do this all over again, meaning the treasure hunt, he said no. Boy, I can understand that, because... A lot has been going on in Mr. Fenn's life, and I want to get into that. But the first thing I want to do is, I want to, I want to preface all this by saying this. Or do I? Maybe I want to do this first.
No, I don't want to do that first. I want to do this first. See what I mean, folks? There's so much going on with this thing, and it's all muddled up. I'm just going to read a very good article. Yeah, this is a great article by a guy named Peter Frick Wright. It was published on June 9th, which would be three days after uh, the treasure announcement, treasure being found announcement. Oh, by the way, this is the chest, the chest that's been found, right? The chest that was found outside and then was moved. And it's so funny because in one of the captions to it, uh, which I'll show, it, it even says sitting on a trail. And all of us searchers know about the whole trail thing. That is um, Forrest Fenn with his turquoise neck bracelet on. I always say necklace for bracelet. I don't know why. And then this is Forrest going through the chest. Now I have a couple of things I'm going to mention about these. And then my JPEG. That those are, I'm going to have a couple of things I'm going to mention about that, uh, these pictures, because of an article that was written by a CBS correspondent. But before I say anything about that, I'm going to read some bits and pieces of this article. Really good, really well written. Peter Frick Wright. He says, uh, So until we know more about where it was, who found it and what he plans to do now, the hunt is in a maddening kind of limbo. It is both over and not. The chest is simultaneously newly found and perhaps also gone forever. Call it Schrodinger's treasure. Schrodinger's equation is that weird quantum physics thing where you put the cat in the box in the... I guess there's radiation radiation there's radio something radioactive in it or there's poison in it and so when you look at the closed box you don't know the cat is both alive and dead i mean to me it's like well no the cat if he hasn't eaten the poison he's still alive and if he's eaten the poison he's dead but these guys are they're talking quantum physics which is microphysics applied to the cat which is macrophysics I don't know. I've never liked that thing. I read it a long time ago, and I thought, no, that's stupid. The cat is either alive or dead. But then we have in quantum physics, you have this weird thing where, have you ever heard the thing where they can, um, an atom only exists when you look at it, and they can prove this, and then when you don't look at it, it doesn't exist anymore? It goes away? Whew. I mean, there's some, there's some stuff in quantum physics mechanics that makes you question reality and your perception of reality. And when they start talking about realities that are totally a product of your mind, they, they really, <laughs> really trumpet on my belief system. I mean, in the sense that something only exists when you look at it. It's weird. Very strange. Okay. I'm not going to get into all the stuff about what happened. Um, well, okay, here's where it gets interesting now. I'm skipping some of the stuff that we've already, it's past now. In this case, the problem with telling everyone about the location of Fenn's treasure is that there's a good chance it doesn't legally belong to the person that found it. It varies by state, but in general, treasure found on private property belongs to the landowner, not the finder. We all knew that. You should uh, stay out of court by negotiating a split. I think we all knew that. I don't think what to do if it's on private property is ever cross. That's never been a problem for me to figure out what to do unless you want to take it without telling the private landowner and hope he never finds out and all those kind of things could go into the finder when Forrest Fenn lets the finder be the only one that discusses a location that's a lot of legal responsibility right here's something I want to get off my chest before well okay just a second on federal land, like national parks and national forests, treasure hunters need permits to keep anything they find. I didn't know that. I thought you just had to go report to the superintendent. 
And even when you're going to need lawyers, because Fenn's treasure doesn't fit into any category for which the federal government has a neat and tidy legal definition. We know this. Forrest Fenn said before the treasure was ever found, he said, I've sat down with my lawyers and discussed this, and they have said to me, Forrest, we're not even sure how this is going to pan out because this is a unique situation the way you put this treasure out there. This guy is saying the exact same thing. Um, no precedent has been set for this. Legal precedent. He says it wasn't lost, misplaced, or abandoned. At 10 years old, it's not really from antiquity. It doesn't even fit the legal definition of a treasure. The question here is whether it's even a treasure trove, said Ben Costello, an attorney and board member of the 1715 Fleet Society, which researches and documents the recovery of shipwrecks. I don't think it is because the owner is unknown. Property where the owner is known is supposed to go back to the original owner. We don't have laws for gold and jewels the owner doesn't want back. But of course we know that Fenn wouldn't ref... Well, Fenn has talked about a gift tax that he would pay. So, And he's always kind of implied that if the treasure was found that he would gain, rep gain possession of it and then give it to the finder and then there would be this gift tax that he would pay. So he would take possession of it. I saw the announcement, someone found Fenn's million dollar treasure, and I thought, do they know they're about to pay 450000 or so in income taxes, says Larry Brandt, a, Turk, a tax attorney in Portland, Oregon. Brandt says the IRS views treasure just like any other income. The moment you find it, you owe taxes on it for that year. Regardless of whether you auction it off, give it to someone, or keep it in your living room as a conversation piece, that was news to me too. Never occurred to me that you would have to pay. I thought you pay for things when you make money off them. Kind of like stocks. You know, when you get any kind of a gain. So it never occurred to me that I could have the treasure for three years sitting under my bed, as an example, and, and the IRS is going to, how would the IRS even know? Well, folks, for those of you that say the I, that this thing is, they're going to know now. <laughs> and I think that's part of the reason we're going to have information coming out sooner rather than later. If you have to pay taxes on a treasure when you find it that year, whatever year you find it, I can tell you as someone that had the Department of Natural Resources in Colorado, if you can imagine this, I did a video in Vermilion Creek, Colorado, and at the end of the video I said, I am going to come back someday and I'm going to the other end of this canyon. I don't have time now, but I had exhausted all of the finds at the end of the canyon I was at where I thought I would find it, and I ran into this thing that stopped me from going any further, this ladder and water and cold and the wood and all that, as I said at the time, which looking back seems kind of funny. Well, some DNR guy in Colorado was watching this, and he emailed me, and he said, uh, I've been watching your video, and I just want to let you know that at the other end of that canyon is a private, I think he said private state trust land or something. But anyway, he said, you need to get permission to be on that. And if you don't have permission and you're caught, you'll be, you know. It was a very nice letter, very professional letter, and I was amazed to see that the, uh, amazed and I guess a admirable way that someone out in the DNR in Colorado was keeping track of what people are doing on parts of their land that they're in charge of. So you don't think the IRS has been keeping track of Mr. Finn's treasure hunt? And you don't think now, if this is true, that someone owes taxes for that year, for this year, on that treasure because they just found it? We think they just found it. Maybe they found it and just told Fenn about it. It's kind of odd. I mean, Fenn said, you know, when he first said, I don't know the guy, and then suddenly he says, oh, well, I guess I had an email from him in 2018. That's easily done. I mean, that's an honest mistake. No problem with that, but we just assume that uh, the guy found it when Fenn announced he found it, and uh, I have no doubt the IRS is going to go to Mr. Fenn and say we need to get the name of that guy. What's Mr. Fenn going to say? No.
I mean, to the IRS? You might say, yeah, Eric, they, he has the right to say no. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm just like, why get into it with the IRS over something like that? If, if the guy has to pay taxes for this year, I would just say to the IRS, yeah, his name is Joe Schmo. He's from back east. Good luck. I made the name up. <laughs> just kidding. I mean, he, to the IRS, he made the name up, so it's kind of, he didn't really tell them their name. <laughs> And of course, then he says there's a matter of state and local taxes. Whatever state it was found in are going to want their cut. Now, the cuts are very often very small. Like he says here in New Mexico, that would be 4.9% off the top. Wyoming, though, he said, would take nothing in this, this uh, thing. <clears throat> now, this guy is a breakdown of what would happen to the treasure chest, which is enough to make you glad you never found the treasure chest. He said, so let's say the treasure's worth a million dollars, which is what Ben originally said it might be worth. The finder owes half of it in taxes. And let's say half of what's left goes to the lawyers he'll need to sort out the claim to the property. Wow. $250,000 to figure out the, the property claim on a million dollar treasure. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like a lot. I mean, I understand it's a lot of money, but... 250,000 for lawyers to me sounds like a lot. Then he brings up the fact that there's a Chicago woman who is suing Fenn. Oh, this is such a ridiculous lawsuit. This is the woman in Chicago. This is one of the things I'm talking about when I talk about the timing. Okay, it's time to go to part two.